we're looking for one specific antelope in all of Wyoming, next on The Journal. From every point on the compass, from the woodlands and fields and waterways, come thrills and excitement and challenges enough for every man, woman, and child. These are our adventures, our stories of the wild places, both near and far. All of the hits, the misses, the memories, our time spent living the wild life. Join us. Venture out into the world at the end of the asphalt. The world of the Wilderness Journal. The journal is underwritten by Algoma Country, Ontario, Canada. It's that scenic, that remote, that calm. 100 page travel guide available at fishalgoma.net. And by Heinz Propane. With locations in Mount Pleasant, Clare, Beaverton, and Harrison, Michigan. Heinz Propane provides residential and commercial services throughout the state. Heinz Propane, your hometown propane provider. And by the Ina Store in Tustin, Michigan. Ina Store features Case, IH, and a full line of Kubota tractors and RTVs as well as parts, service, and accessories. The Ina Store in beautiful downtown Ina, Michigan by Mads Outdoor Product, a full-line Avalon dealer. Mads also features Mirocraft boat and Featherlight trailer, as well as combination boat, dock, and lift packages. Mads Outdoor Product in the center of it all, Harrison and Cadillac, Michigan. Captioning provided by DP Tire Services Commercial and Retread Division. Hi friends and welcome. On today's adventure, we're headed out west. We're going out to Saratoga, Wyoming for a do-it-yourself black powder antelope hunt. Now, if you're a regular viewer, a frequent flyer here on the journal, you know we try to put in for this tag every year. We don't always get it, and most of the time when we do draw, it's Tina that's the lucky hunter, and I have to tell you, she has had some tremendous successes over the years on this hunt. And late that next morning, there's a bunch of Oh, yeah, the whole we could see dozens of antelope all mixed together. The bucks were obviously trying to split up their harems. Several bunches had gotten mixed up when they were out hay in the other side of this big field. We'd seen some machinery earlier, and now the bucks were trying to split them back out. They were chasing all over the place. They're running. Yeah, they're trying to split up the does. They're trying to, their harems are all mixed up. Another bunch. Oh yeah. There's an awful bunch of them. Some good bucks in there. There's a nice one. Get your gun up. They're coming this way. Some of them. Go ahead and put your gun up. Just get ready. Just take your turn. There's a couple of good ones there. That one right there by the tall skinny one. He's the biggest of them. He's got the most mass. Anyway, that's the oldest buck. Just try to keep your eye on that group. I know there's a bunch of them. A large group of antelope, including a couple of good bucks and one real smoker had made the turn and were now working their way up the field toward Tina. If they kept coming, just let them come. Just get on that, that biggest one to the right. 
the group had made it all the way up to the field edge. They were definitely in range, and there were a couple of good bucks and one really nice buck in this bunch. I was trying to help Tina sort them out. Not the tall, slender one. Look to the right of it. Look at the real massive one. The bucks were starting to separate their does again, and it looked like some of them were going to go out of the field. But the buck I was trying to get Tina on was still in the field. In fact, he had turned and he was looking back the other way. Look at the real massive one with a doe by himself to the right. She was going to have to get him lined up. Okay, she's out of the way. Yeah, just right at the top of his back. And squeeze and take all your time. He's not going anywhere. The one looking back at that other buck way out there. That really big one with the dough right there. Right on it. Just down a couple inches. No more. And now, now it was on Dina. He ain't going to work. Now oh, nailed him. Beautiful shot. <laughs> you nailed him. He went down. Yeah. Great. That's an awesome, awesome buck. Look at that. I mean, he's got nice ivory tips. I bet that's a 15 inch goat. Look at the mass on that size of the cutters. That's the biggest goat you've ever gotten, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think so. there's going to have to be some shuffling on your wall now. <laughs> you ready? Ready. All right, well, I want you to tell me, was it worth all that work, that crawling around? Yeah, it was. All the cactus and the cow poo? Oh, yeah, my knee still hurts, but yeah. <laughs> that buck Tina got two seasons ago was gorgeous, and we'd certainly settle for one just like it every time. Still, there was this one buck, a really tall, special buck, that we really would have liked to have gotten a crack at. And I was hoping that if we drew this tag again, maybe we could. Well, fast forward a year and I was the lucky hunter. I finally drew this tag, so we went right back out there looking for it. Fortunately for me, it wasn't a couple of minutes later and there was a nice buck working some does right out in front of us. This buck had really long horns, but his body was kind of thin and he didn't have much mass. This was one of them bucks that's right on the line. He was pretty good right now. In a year or two, he might be a super goat. Friends, it was decision time in Wyoming. I definitely didn't want that little guy over there alongside the fence. And there were definitely more and more antelope piling up behind us and crossing up into the field. I knew Tina wanted to go home. I knew she really wanted to get this done today, so yeah, I passed. I just wanted to see a few more. I really wanted to see what else might show up. I sat there and watched those antelope run away, and then I heard a bunch more coming right behind us. I whispered to Tina. We could hear him right behind us coming at the fence, and then Tina pointed in the other direction. I looked, and that, friends, is what we were looking for. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> that one. We nailed that one. He, wow. Watch him. He's done, right? He ain't going nowhere. Awesome, right here, girl. Nice. All right. Hey, I don't do high fives to pretty girls. I get kisses. You're usually the, the antelope getter, but this time it uh, fell to me because almost amazingly, somebody didn't draw. For <laughs> well, thanks for letting us lesser mortals have a chance. That's a nice goat right there. Yeah. Heavy, big high cutters. Let me set this down. Black powder gun. But either way, oh, take look at that goat, girl. Look at that thing. Big old dude got a bunch of extra 
stuff. We got a busted off cutter, big gnarly end. This a old oh boy. That for a do-it-yourself hunt. That thing is beautiful. Big, nice, black, dark patches. I tell you, this is a this is an exciting way to hunt. This is a great hunt, and you can do it yourself out here. And all these goats come off public land. We we're fortunate to get Robert and Cindy to let us sit up here in their fence row, basically. But this is all public land stuff out here in Wyoming. You draw a tag, you can come do this. And I tell you, look at that. That is something. That's a dandy goat. Good. Not as good as yours. <laughs> but then whose are? I'll take him. That. That is sniping goats with a black powder gun right there. Welcome to wonderful Wyoming. I need to get a tag on him. We need to get him cleaned out. Take him home. Kai loves that stuff. That's her thing. That was another awesome hunt and a really nice goat, but I still didn't get a shot at Mr. Big. We'd seen him, that great big tall goat. We just never got a chance to take a run at him. So I told Tina, you know, if either one of us draws this tag again, we ought to go back out there and try to hunt that one specific buck. I really had my heart set on him and so did Tina. So when I actually drew that tag again this year, I told her, okay, get in the truck, buckle up. We are going out there looking for Mr. Big. Hey, I'm your host, Kyle Randall. This is my Wilderness Journal and we're going to Wyoming looking for a specific antelope right now. Up the snowy range road from Laramie over the Continental Divide and back down into Saratoga, Wyoming where I spent the morning hunting public land, but by afternoon, back here to give it another try. I was staked out alongside that irrigated hay field. We've got some pretty nice antelope off in this field before Robert and Cindy let us hunt here. Hopefully we can do her one more time. And I remembered thinking as the irrigation pivot slowly walked past me, this is the way I used to hunt. This is a real simple hunt. Anybody can do it. We just asked permission to hunt here. There's public land right behind us. This can truly be a do-it-yourself hunt in the West for those that want to do that, don't want to have an outfitter. And there's some nice antelope here. And not a half hour after I got set up and started watching, I noticed some goats come running in past the cows to the north. And, and I couldn't believe it. It looked like him. That great big tall antelope buck, it had to be. Those horns were 16, 17 inches long. This is a monster booner goat. I'd only been here a half hour and he was already out in the field in front of me. There was another buck. In fact, he was in between the big boy and the doe. He was a decent enough buck in his own right, but this was the antelope buck I'd come looking for. And I thought certainly sooner or later he'll thrash that younger buck and run him off. All I needed to do, all I could do now was sit and wait and watch. Still, this was definitely him. This was the buck I'd driven almost 2,000 miles to get one more look at. But he was definitely going to need to get a lot closer before I even thought about a shot. I couldn't believe it. It was actually that goat, that buck, that tremendous tall antelope. On the very first afternoon, he was right out there in front of me. Unfortunately, he was obviously chasing a doe, as you saw, and she let him clean across the hay field. The only thing I could do, for now at least, was to sit there and hope maybe she'd lead him back. And as I sat there, I noticed another decent buck work his way under the fence and out into the field. This was a pretty good thing, actually. I figured one of these bucks might pick an argument with the big boy and he'd start chasing them like they oft times do. And who knows, they might chase him right on over by me. Maybe. They did push each other around a little bit, but it didn't seem like their heart was in it. And then finally, they just kind of walked off together. That is, until I noticed Big Boy standing over there staring more or less back at me. I took a peek behind me. There were some antelope out on the sage behind me, and he'd already noticed them. 
but then he noticed that other buck getting a little close to his girl and he circled, went back and chased him off. They were moving around some. Unfortunately, most of that movement was still in the wrong direction. I could see him over there plain as day, chasing that doe around, trying to push off them other bucks. Unfortunately, my black powder rifle isn't the gun you'd choose to try a 350 or 400 yard shot. So all I could do was just sit there and wait. And to make matters worse, as I watched, she started leading him off out the other end of the field, getting farther away. Having temporarily, at least, put that other buck in his place, Big Boy was slowly working his way back in my direction. He must have still had the antelope out in the sage behind me on his mind because slowly he was working his way back across the field. And if he kept coming, well, let's just say it was getting more and more interesting with every step he took. And then... He picked up his head and started trotting in my direction. Friends, things was fixing to go from interesting right up to intense if he closed another hundred yards. The bucket closed from a just maybe distance all the way up to just in case. The buck had made it all the way up to about 150 yards when I saw one of the smaller bucks cut back between him and that doe, and I thought for sure he'd turn around and run him off again. But he just stood there. I thought for sure at any minute he'd wheel and go chasing after that other buck, but so far, he was just standing there. He did look back at her occasionally, but he didn't take off. In fact, after staring at her for a few long seconds, he turned and started coming back at me. Friends, that sound you hear is either the singing of the electric wires right above my head or the palpable excitement I was generating watching that buck get closer and closer. Friends, every muscle in my body was aching. I was trying so hard not to be seen. This buck had made it to about 170 yards. He stopped, was working a scrape, but he was taking his own sweet time doing it. And I have to be honest, the longer I have to sit and stare at a critter, the harder it is for me to remain calm. But there really wasn't nothing else to do. It was just sit there, try not to be discovered, and wait for him to get just a little bit closer. If you have ever had to sit and watch a desired game animal. As you play this game out, he'd take a few steps and then stand there. You wait, he'd take a few more. This is what it is to be a predator, to be a hunter. And I have to tell you, it's what makes my juices flow. And then he finally committed. He was closing that last 20 or 30 yards. I was hoping for about a 100-yard shot. That's where I'm real confident with this gun. I've shot it much farther. But as long as he was coming, there was no sense in getting in a rush. And then he stopped and looked back at that doe one last time. And in my mind, I was screaming, no, no, don't go back there. Come on over here. If you've never done it, if you've never sat there and waited like this, it's hard to explain. But let me tell you, this is definitely why I do what I do. He'd closed to within just about 150 yards already. 
he was obviously real interested in those antelope that were out in the sage on the BLM behind me. And I figured, you know, if he keeps coming, well, let's just say that I was actually beginning to believe this might just happen. Now, almost close enough, he was just standing there for what seemed like an hour in my head, but what I'm sure was just a few seconds. And then, and then he turned and trotted off to my right. It gave me a moment to reach down, grab my rangefinder, and take a look just how far he really was. He'd made it to about 125 yards, and I was satisfied he was close enough. All I needed was for him to get sideways, and then he turned and stopped for a second. I thought, well, just step out from that brush. And then moving on my right side, the doe that he had chased into the field had walked right up on top of me. I hadn't paid any attention to her. I was concentrating on him, and she was right there. And then all of a sudden, yeah, he ran off. I couldn't do nothing. She was standing 30 yards in front of me. She finally put her head down, I spun, and I could see him waiting to cross the fence, but all I could see was just the top of his head, and I knew behind him there were cattle on the other side of the fence. I sat there watching, she sat there watching. And then he took one quick look back and ducked under the fence. He was gone. And then, of course, she put her head down and went to feeding, <laughs> now that it didn't matter. I sat there watching, and another one of those bucks came running toward the fence, and I thought, I could probably take him. And I thought, why? It's just the first day. I'll wait. They may come back to get this girl they had before. She stood there in front of me for what seemed like minutes and then walked back off out into the field. I kept waiting for those bucks to come back and chase her again. But they never did. I just couldn't get the shot. It's a huge buck. 132 yards, he was finally close enough. And by the time I got up, he saw some does on the other side of the fence and away he went. He stopped right down there just for a second, but the grass was just too tall. I couldn't get on him. Oh, well, that's the buck we were looking for, or one like it. Pat was right. There's a big goat out here. Maybe he'll come back. Oh, there's some goats up there. I did see some other antelope, but only this flock of Canadian geese made it back into my end of the field that evening. The hunt for Mr. Big would just have to wait till tomorrow. We were close. I almost got to pull the trigger on that big old goat. He was right there, but he was standing in that tall grass. It made him really hard to see. And I knew there were cows on the neighboring property. They were out there a long ways, but still, there was no reason to rush that shot. It was just the first day. In fact, I couldn't really believe we got on him that very first afternoon. I went to bed that night back at the hotel pretty happy, and I stayed pretty happy right about until the time I woke up and heard the rain beating against the hotel window. And friends, it kept raining like that for two days, the only other two days we had to hunt. I never got back out to the field. I did try, and all we wound up doing was getting everything filthy and muddy and wet. We threw it all in the back of the big black truck and drug it on home. I never did see that goat again. I never got a chance to even fill my tag. Still, that's hunting as they say. And we truly hope to see some of you out there trying it, hit or miss. It's a great time. Get out there, chase an antelope around, and who knows, you might just run into us because we'll be back out there doing it. And if we do bump into you, well, you can bet we're gonna stop and share a cup and a fire. And friends, if we don't see you out there, well, then I promise I'll wait for you right back here so we can share another adventure from my wilderness journal.